Hello everyone and welcome to Vantage Corner. In today's video, we are going to install OpenWRT on x86 hardware. It can be a PC, a server or a laptop. And first of all, let's navigate to the OpenWRT download page to get the firmware. So just click here and then through the release versions and the target, right? So we will be using the stable versions. So it should be the latest one. This is 19.7.4 and let's go to target. And we will be going to x86. All right, so here we have different types of uh, build. So we have 64, we have generics, we have geot and we have legacies. So let's have a look in our documentation here and we can see that 64 is for the modern PC hardware with the 64-bit CPU. This is recommended build for the best performance. Generically for 32-bit only hardware, select it if you have Atom processors or PC hardware can't run 64-bit versions. And legacy is for already old PC hardware, maybe pre-Pentium 4. And lastly, GeoS, so you can just read it by your own and select the version. So for this case, I will go with the 64-bit. Now you will see different file offers and the following tools under this image you can download and use. A combined ext4 or combined swatch fx combined swatch fx this this image you the traditional openwrt layout a swatch fx reads only root file system and a read and write partition where the settings and packages you are installed are stored and because of this you will have only 230 megabytes of space to store additional package and configurations on the other hand, combine ext4, you a single read and write ext4 partition with no read only swatch root file system. And also because of this, you cannot do the factory reset because it doesn't have read only partition. So let go with the ext, combine ext4. And while we are downloading the firmware, let me talk a little bit about the network interface all right so as you can see from here the 60-bit image support intel and retex ethernet chipsets and the generics and legacy image supports intel realtex vi and some other ethernet chipsets so if your pc uses either realtex or intel let's go with 64-bit else you can give a try with the generic build and if you are using the completely new Ethernet adapter, then you may need to build your own OpenWRT firmware and maybe I will do a guide later on. The image has been successfully downloaded and let's use the application to burn it to our USB drive. So you can use either Win32 disk images or etchers or Rufus. And in this case, I will be using Rufus, right? So let me open the applications and then plug in the USB right. Just select your firmware. And then make sure that you have select the correct USB right and press start. And it will write the image to the USB right. The image had been written to the USB right and let's set up our routers and do some of the basic configurations. Alright, so this is our router where we're going to install OpenWRT. It is powered by the Intel D525 Low TDP and we have two Ethernet ports. One port is for the LAN and one port is for the WAN interface. And we also have a VGA port and the console port, which is very easy for troubleshooting and light installation. Let's connect all the cables and powering on the routers. Let me just zoom in so that you can see what is going on on the screen. A lot of white text going on on the black screen.
and the router is ready so let's press enter to initialize it and at the very first step when logging into the new router you need to set the password for it so let's press PASWG to set the password it's saying that the password is too weak but never mind yeah let's just do it and now let me just show our network interface and just run the command UCI show network so from this result you can see we have three main interface we have the loopback interface we have the LAN interface and the one interface and as you can see from the IF name which is the interface name so the one interface is assigned to Ethernet 1 and the LAN interface is assigned to Ethernet 0 and the Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 0 is our physical device and the router so these are the physical port on our routers and we need to know which one is Ethernet 1 and which one is Ethernet 0. So let me try to connect a network cable from one of the computer to the network port on the router and let's see the status, the update on the screen so that we know we are connecting to which port, right? So as you can see, as soon as I connect the network cable to the port, uh, we have an update that Ethernet 1 link become ready. So we know that this is the Ethernet 1 is assigned to this second port. But the Ethernet 1 is for the one interface, while my cable is for a computer so it's a line interface. So I have to swap the port. And let me just do that. All right. So as soon as I swap the cable from the port number two to port number one, then uh, we are connect to the correct interface, which is Ethernet zero, which is the LAN interface. And as you can see, the BR LAN is up and ready, and we have a working client right now, so we can log into Lucy Web v one nine two one six a dot one dot one to configure everything. And let me just run the IF config to check our interface status one more time. Everything looks good, so let's do a check and let me try to ping google.com to verify that. Hmm, something is not right. Um, and as you can see from the response time, we have a lot of sequence gap and we have a lot of uh, like the response time is also not good so there should be something wrong for sure you will have 60 percent of packet loss and it could be because of my internet service provider router you know supporting ipv6 why open wrt come with ipv6 configuration at the default so i have to disable the ipv6 and in order to do that i have to modify the network configuration file so i will use uh, Vim to edit the network configuration file and let press VI and then space uh, slash etc slash config slash network and I have to go down to the last line and then press the I button to switch to the insert mode and delete everything I'm sorry just delete the one six interface and one I done I have to press the escape button to switch to the view mode again after that I have to press semicolon WQ so W for right and Q for quick after that let's restart the network service and let's try again and still something is not right it say google.com is a bad address let me try to hard reboot the router and see if this have one link become ready and lan link become ready so let's check if we are good to go now Alright, so ping to Google is still failed and ping to my LAN interface is possible and if I run the IF config one more time, I can see that my 
one interface having an IP address of 192.168.1.14, which means it is in the subnet of 192.168.1.1/24, and this is the same subnet with my LAN interface, and it could cause a confliction. So I have to change my LAN interface to some different subnet. So I will change it to 192.168.5.1, and I will see if this will help to resolve the problem. All right, so first of all, let's run UCI show network to see our network interface configuration. And as here you can see network.lan.ip address equal to 192.168.1.1. And let me run another command. So UCI set network.lan.ip address equal to 192.168.5.1 to change it. After that, we have to commit the change. So UCI commit, and lastly, Servit Network Restart to restart the network service, of course. And I highly believe that this will solve the problem. And just to verify, let me run UCI show network one more time, and we see that the LAN IP address has changed to 192.168.5.1, and have a check in our interface config it's good so let's ping google one more time and this time we have a positive resolve the ping is really good and that's all we have solved the problem with the ping and this is because of the uh, subnet conflict between our one interface and our LAN interface so that's all about the tutorial so if you see it's useful please like share and subscribe to support the channel and as on the way if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comment section and i will try my best to support see ya